you take your sample, you put it on a rotating stage, spin it around, an X-ray gun fires X-rays through it and they're picked up by a detector on the other side. The denser the material, the fewer X-rays get through. By looking at these X-ray projections, you can uh, compute a good estimate of the density of the sample at each point. So this is the, the main part of the building that houses a set of three X-ray scanners, like medical scanners, but higher resolution, uh, and differ only in that the sample rotates and the X-ray emitter and detector stay still, whereas in a hospital they would spin around the patient and stay still. There are three different sizes. This is our original one. Um, this will take samples about the size of a Coca-Cola can and do uh, very high resolution images of them. And this and all the others produce a three-dimensional image of the sample uh, in which each voxel value, a voxel being a three-dimensional pixel, uh, measures the density of the material at that point. So air has a much lower density than bone and so on. We have a larger one that takes samples uh, around about the size of a bucket, about 20 centimetres in diameter. Uh, and they both do the same thing. They produce volumetric descriptions of volumetric images of the sample. Um, and over here we have our larger scanner, which is a, a custom-built room-sized device. This allows us to take images of samples that are about a metre long uh, and about uh, 25 to 30 centimetres in diameter. So this is much, much bigger samples. Images tend to be lower resolution but the same basic idea. The samples that we use are plastic columns filled with soil with plants growing in them. Uh, a metre long sample uh, can be something like 80 to 90 kilograms in weight. Uh, so we don't want people carrying those around and we particularly don't want people dropping those into our scanner. So they're put in automatically. And through here you can see a large FANUC arm. And the way the facility works is the samples are dropped into the circular uh, ring on the floor there, and the arm picks them up and loads them into the scanner. <laughs> do you want the robot to move? Um, do you want the robot to move? Yeah. Come, can the robot move? I need to turn it on. When you're using the facility, you need to design an experiment, which is a set of samples that are going to be scanned at particular times. Um, and the whole point of it is that it's fully automatic. So we need to program that ahead. So we've had a, an interface built which shows a map of the facility. The round circles are the samples. Along here is the, the path that the robot moves along. Okay. So here's the, uh, the robot arm and here's the, uh, the battery uh, system. Uh, the robot is self-charging. It will go back to base and charge up. This is a standard glass house. We grow our plants in these containers in here. They're laid out neatly in rows because the way that we transport them is we have a laser guided vehicle over here. On top of the vehicle is a laser. The top spins around. There are reflectors placed at particular points around the glass house. You can see the cylindrical objects fastened to the walls. They're markers. The robot can measure the reflection of the laser off those markers and know where it is. And so it can navigate autonomously around and pick up uh, whichever sample we're interested in. <laughs> this vastly interesting door will open, <laughs> the robot will put the sample in, yeah. then on the other side of it a robot arm will pick it up and put it into the, the scanner. We have a collection of wheat, maize, we're about to do some barley. We look almost exclusively at food crops in here. And there's a lot of space in here. It's basically because of the turning circle of the, uh, the AGV. Um, we've we have one that uh, is normally used in manufacturing industry. Uh, to be able to lift the weight of these, they have to be a reasonable size. Uh, we've ended up with one that has quite a large turning circle. So that fires a laser plane out at about ankle height. And if I stand in the way now, the robot will stop rather than run over me. So these things are intended to be used in places that are occupied by humans. Uh, so we, we went for this because it allows us to have people working in here as well as the robot. So is it switched off? Just turn it out, yeah. Yeah, the laser on the top spins around. It needs to pick up, I think, five of the cylinders to be able to compute where it is. It's fairly standard technology. Uh, these robots are sometimes used in hospitals to carry big baskets of food around or laundry. 
The bit of this that's non-standard is the analysis of the images to pull out the root structures. Biologists and plant scientists in particular are looking at producing varieties of plants that will grow in the conditions that we are currently facing. Yeah, so water has moved around, some areas are much wetter than they used to be, some are much drier. It's getting hard to produce plants that will live in those conditions and produce enough food. The biologists understand the genetic structure of the plants fairly well. But to be able to produce a food supply, they need to relate the genetic structure of the plants to the physical, what's called the phenotype. But growers have been doing this for centuries, haven't they? Just deciding what plants to use in what conditions and how to crossbreed them. They have, uh, but there are two differences now. Uh, one is that we need to find uh, finer and finer differences between plants to be able to, to make a decision. It used to be that you could look at a plant and say, this one's so high, this one's this high, we'll take the big one. Um, and now it needs more detailed data. Uh, the other one is that attention's focused very much on the top half of the plant, on the shoots and the leaves and so on. What hasn't been done is manipulating the roots of the plants because it's very hard to do in comparison. The biologists have a lot of tools that can tell them about the genetic structure of plant roots, um, but they need ways of looking at the physical structure of plant roots. And to do that, they have a couple of, op of options. One is they can grow the plants in artificial media, like clear gels or water, so they can see them, take images, and find out what the structure is. Uh, alternatively, they can grow them in soil and then dig them up and look at them afterwards. But to get digging them up is destructive. You can only do it at one time point, and you lose a three-dimensional structure of the root when you do it. So what we're doing here is we're using X-ray microcomputer tomography to take images of plant roots growing in soil, and we're developing image analysis, computer vision methods that will allow us to analyze those images and to pull out quantitative descriptions that the biologists can then relate to genetic studies and measurements of the plant environment to try and understand what's going on. So we have a 30 megabyte three-dimensional array of these density values that we have to analyze to pull out the plant roots and separate them from the soil. That's difficult because the Plant roots are largely made up of organic matter and water, and soil is in large part organic matter and water. So uh, you have one problem that the set of gray levels that you get from a plant root can overlap with the set of gray levels that you get from the surrounding soil. There isn't a nice clear line. You can't say, if I have a density of greater than 42, it's root, and less than 42, it's soil, because that's not the way it works. The second problem that you have is that roots are very complicated things living in a complicated environment uh, and if you take a particular root segment and look along it you'll see that the density that's measured uh, varies along the root in a not very predictable way. Uh, it could be due to the material properties of the root changing as it gets older, it could be due to the water content varying, uh, it could be a larger effect that if there's a very large stone nearby uh, that can take some of the x-ray power away and so you get a slightly different response from your root. But for whatever the cause, we can't assume that all root looks the same. Without the automated image analysis method, you can use x-ray to look at roots. Um, but what you need to do is segment the root from the soil manually, which involves someone looking at a very large data set and using their judgment to decide which parts of it represent root and which parts of it represent soil. And there are a couple of problems with that. One of them is obviously subjective. What I think is a root might not be what you think is a root. The other problem is the time taken. Uh, on an average scan, it can take four to six hours for a skilled operator to identify the root uh, system to a reasonable degree of accuracy. Uh, it takes about an hour to make a scan on average. So if it's an hour to scan and six hours to analyze, we would build up a huge backlog of unanalyzed data. On average then, that four to six hours manually, how long would that take to do that with the automated system? It, it does depend on the, on the resolution of the scan and so on, um, but usually half an hour to an hour. So in the slightly unusual world where it takes an hour to capture an image, this is effectively a real-time system. 499 were very simple models. The 500th was uh, an action figure showing uh, Boba Fett. We uh, x-rayed an example of this to find out what the guy had got.